my gosh. Oh my gosh, you just come here. <laughs> okay, I just, okay. So first off, there's like a bunch of things I want to show you, but this is the moment I just need to tell you because this is like a recreation. Um, how did I get started in mushroom hunting? It was totally by accident, okay? So... That, I think, is a giant patch of white chanterelles. Oh, yes, oh my gosh. With how fast I was driving, but look how obvious these are. Look at these, oh my god. White chanterelles, oh yes, oh more. I need to get my basket, I need to get my basket. Hold up. <laughs> All right. So these are popping up out of the ground really well. A lot of times white chanterelles are gonna be pretty buried. Holy cow. Look at this bouquet of white chanterelles. Oh, this is so good. Oh my gosh. This is so good. If you don't know how to identify a chanterelle, guess what? I have an episode about that. But right now, I'm just gonna trim off some of this dirt and we're gonna pop it in my basket. There's another one over there. And then we'll be on the road again. Like normally you don't have to do too much trimming with chanterelles, but with white ones, they are just, they're filthy little buggers. And I like to bring um, sometimes some extra bags. Wax bags are nice. That way I can keep some of the edible stuff a little bit nicer. This is just kind of from almost a cleanliness perspective um, and keeping the forest looking nice. Not like people are stomping through, is if you trim up your mushroom, just try not to leave like debris and stuff all around. Kind of cover up your holes, less conspicuous that way. And then people also won't know that you've been there and not stop themselves to look for mushrooms. Keeps your secrets more, or keeps your spots more secret. That's what I meant. So the white chanterelle is actually something that's unique to the Pacific Northwest. So if you don't live in the Pacific Northwest, this isn't something that you will be finding. But there are so many different chanterelle species worldwide and even in North America especially. Learn what your basic chanterelle looks like and then you can learn what varieties you have. colors you can already see are just fantastic um anyways well, let's just go show i'll just go show you i realize a lot of this video is just kind of like showing you guys around and getting reacquainted hi nice to meet you again and welcome newcomers all right check this out oh my gosh this is so good <laughs> like how cool is that look at these natural bridges and the colors okay i'm gonna run and go walk across that Literally run! Oh, check this out. Oh my gosh, this is so perfect. <laughs> so, growing out of this tree that just fell over, we've got some Dyer's polypore. Oh, check it out. It's, some of it's growing right here too. <laughs> Look at this. So this and this is the same thing. This is just a tiny bit older. And when it gets even older than that, it's like kind of dry and brittle and dark brown and crunchy um but like really wet and uh, gooey 
Great mushroom for natural dyes. That's why it's called the dyer's polypore. Uh, check out underneath, you see those droplets? That's glutation. So glutation is essentially like mushroom sweat. So I've probably talked about this before, but it's just like uh, when we exercise or we're going through growth or breathing, there's like droplets of fluid in our breath, we sweat and mushrooms do the same thing. So it's like a metabolic byproduct of the actively growing mushroom. Sometimes equitation is brilliant, different colors, uh, bright colors. A lot of times it's just clear like that and looks like really fancy dewdrops. But more about this mushroom, okay. One thing that's interesting about this mushroom is it's, it's considered a butt rot mushroom. Yes, I have a notes page on my phone of stupid names for mushrooms. Butt rot is one of them, but it's actually a really practical name at the same time because it rots the butt of the tree. Uh, and so these mushrooms, you'll find them growing. They almost look like they're growing out of the ground. When they grow out of the ground, it's called terrestrial, like they're growing out of the ground. But really, they're attached to wood. And this one here clearly is attached to wood. But that must have been what was going on with this tree. It had a bunch of butt rot, and which is an attributing factor of this massive thing tumbling over uh, down into the cave down there. Um, but if anybody is into using uh, mushrooms as natural dyes, this is a fantastic mushroom. You can get a variety of colors of yellows and golds when it's young uh, and kind of more of the orangey browns when it's a little bit older. Yeah, wow, this is super soft, super fresh. Come back next year and it will actually still be there, but it will be all like crunchy and hard. All right, so if you see the underside of this mushroom, it does not have gills. It has lots of little tiny pores, and these pores are pretty soft, um, but they're not really squishy like a sponge, but there are pores. So mushrooms that um, usually grow in kind of a shelf-like pattern like this and have pores, they're called polypores. Polypore just means lots of pores. That one's not too scientific. Anyone can get that. All right, so polypores, you might hear that term, polypores, tons of polypores around here. Often they grow on trees. There you go. We will definitely do an episode sometime about gear. Pretty simple, but necessary. Oh my gosh, look, it's also growing all under here. <laughs> it is just busting out. So probably the mycelium was like all totally enmeshed in this tree. And once it opened up like that, the mycelium was like, we need to fruit, we need to fruit, spread our spores. And so now it's got all this open surface area. So it's just busting out everywhere on this tree. It's amazing. Actually, I should probably get a picture of that one. That's really cool. This is like science in action right here. This is like what's happening. Obviously very slow over time, but like, this is it. This is what mushrooms and fungus are doing in, in the forest, partially. All right, so let's talk. All right, so what is Yellow Eleanor season two gonna look like. Uh, definitely a lot of walking through the woods, looking for mushrooms. I can see by past videos uh, that you guys really like the longer episodes where we're kind of sauntering through the woods, picking out different things, but also featuring different mushrooms. So we'll be doing that, but we're also gonna be talking a lot about just what's it take to be a mushroom forager. Uh, not just the identification aspect, but other aspects of like, what do you bring with you? And how do you not get lost? And uh, all the goods that go along with it and how do you find a spot to go mushroom hunting because yeah you better bet I ain't gonna tell you where I'm at. I know some of you locals will be able to spot where I am at because of the footage but first rule of mushroom hunting you don't share your locations with people so how do you find a location? Stuff like that so that's what we're gonna be going over. Is this where I tell them that you're gonna be torturing me all year? <laughs> uh, okay I don't know what I was saying. 
ultimately, I want to bring you guys along with me into the woods to experience something that most people don't pay attention to, right? My favorite thing about being an educator and being out in the woods is having people's eyes open to the forest floor in a totally new way. So this is a way that I can bring you guys along with me, which is fantastic. I, I do that a little bit on Instagram already, but I think here it's going to bring more rich experience. Because for real, you're going to be able to hear my squeals that really do happen unfortunately a lot <laughs> um but coming along with me is my little brother uh his name is zach and he is the guy behind the camera sometimes maybe in front of the camera uh you'll probably hear his voice prompting me because this is very unnatural for me and he's trying to help me be a little more comfortable also he's the one who does all the editing so if you have any issues um and a side note from that too as well if i get any facts wrong you can also blame him <laughs> all right might get experimental with the music i think that's great though because this is just like a fun thing i mean like, how many right techno beat mushroom foraging videos have you seen techno beat i'm we totally kidding <laughs> We, yeah, we want to make more videos, a lot more videos. We want to be uh, more consistent in releasing them. When I first launched this YouTube channel, we were pretty consistent in releasing videos. Uh, and then life happened. Well, you know, we're like four years older now. Hello, gray hair. Um, and so <laughs> uh, we do. Uh, my brother and I, uh, we grew up spending time in the woods together. So this is actually a really cool way for us to get out and be in the woods together again, just kind of a different way. And he's actually just in case, I don't know if he'll put this in here since he has the control. I can't always drag my brother around because I go out to the woods a lot when he's not available. And there are gonna be chances when I run into really cool things that I wanna talk about or have ideas I wanna share. Um, or maybe, um, you know, I just feel inspired. And so he has this torture device that he created for me. And I've never actually seen it. Yes, he's unveiling it. Okay. It's not that bad. <laughs> it's not like a real selfie stick, but it's our version of it. Yep. Thankfully, over the last year on Instagram, I've been trying hard to do like Instagram stories and like get used to that whole thing. Um, but this is like next level. So this way I can take you guys with me more often because uh, there's I'm always finding really amazing things I would love to teach about and talk about, um, but I don't really have the means. You know, we might as well actually have to turn this on. <laughs> done it right here. Okay, we can redo it if you want. No, it's fine. Practice. Hey! So like, oh, I can actually see on the other side. See, that is how I don't know anything. I really like don't know anything. I do know that big ones of those are called dead kittens. What's this one? Dead mouse? Sure. sure. <laughs> so anyways, going to have to get used to this and this. I know people are like, ooh, do it from up above. You can't see your double chin. I don't know why. I like it from down below for some reason. Hey. We're going to be creating a little bit of content like this with me walking, basket, trees, whatever. Um, that way, when I'm out, I have an opportunity to share with you a little bit more. And I don't always have to have my brother with me. But side note, he still has control because he's going to do the editing. So you can still blame uh, so part of this, uh, usually if I'm going to be out in the woods with this thing, uh, maybe I need to have a name for it. Maybe I'll name it. Name it. <laughs> you guys want to help me name it? Nothing inappropriate. It's going to be great because I have more teachable moments. And that's what I love. I love teachable moments. Um, but the downside is I'm not going to be able to show as much detail about a mushroom. So when I'm out with this, I may not be talking about a specific edible mushroom in such detail. Um, but maybe it's going to be more educational opportunities to talk about those other things that have to do with mushroom foraging and identifying other stuff and I just I know I've kind of said this but I want to reiterate it this is very not natural for me uh, I am an introvert surprise surprise but I have a lot of extrovert abilities to do this and to be like in a strange way expressing myself with a handheld camera is weird so instead of thinking this of this as a camera I'm just gonna imagine you guys are sitting there cheering me on, saying, yes, we want more fungus. How did I get started in mushroom hunting? It was totally by accident, okay? So I went out looking for huckleberries with a group of people. I didn't know them super well. Uh, no huckleberries. We decided, let's just go for a hike anyways. And we went for a hike in the, the trail. I honestly, 
I cannot find the trail that we hiked on that day. I've looked for it, but I actually think it's actually been redone because this trail system has been redone a few times. Anyway, so this is the closest I can get to where I think that moment happened. And what happened was one guy knew a little bit about mushrooms, said, oh my gosh, these are chanterelles. And I said, what's that? Never heard that word before. Didn't even know it was a mushroom. But through him just showing me the mushroom, telling me to smell it and feel it and pull it apart and him just talking about it and his enthusiasm, like, okay, mushrooms, sweet. So let's start looking. And all of a sudden there were mushrooms everywhere. Mushrooms of every kind. We've been on this trail just very briefly and I can't stop pointing out mushrooms of all these things that we're seeing. Okay. So standing right behind you, Matsutake, are you kidding me? Like we got Matsutake here. These are definitely going home with me. Ugh, another moment where I wish you could smell, smell what's going on. Mmm. Yum, yum, yum. Here's a younger one. I'm gonna grab this one. The young Matsutake still has its veil intact. Make the cameraman smell it. Mm. So good. It's so good. Okay. Dirt so, spice. <laughs> dirt spice. That's right. Hey, dirt spice. It's old spice for hippies. My brother, he coined that phrase. So, okay. We have found Matsutake golden chanterelles and white chanterelles and a variety of other crazy mushrooms, just beautiful mushrooms. But then come over here because, oh my gosh, there's more of it right here. This is what I want to show you. This is like, these are purple fairy clubs. Look at this. Like this is stuff that you can walk by so fast and not even know because they blend in. But come back here. This is like so beautiful and so amazing careful because you might be stepping on it look at this all in here all back there look at this cluster right here how glorious purple it is it's so amazing look at this this is stuff that you just walk by and don't even know it blends in unless you stop and you look at the details and like this is the kind of stuff I want to show you guys it is not always about what you can eat it's about what you can learn what else is out here what is actually going on in this environment this is just amazing so that was my experience of just all of a sudden noticing all these things on the forest floor and after that moment I was like I want to learn this and I want to learn this well of course what can I eat I wanted to know that but I just fell in love with mushrooms because I got to see their diversity and their beauty in that day and it was incredible. So now, uh, fast forward to this moment, um, I've realized through my journey that it's really hard for beginners to really get into identifying mushrooms. As far as resources out there, it's getting better these days, but still a lot of stuff is really scientific and it's not really easy for a beginner to grasp some of those terms and uh, be able to work the ID process. So I'm hoping like through my experience that I had of kind of stumbling through it, a lot of trial and error as far as like the ID process goes. Um, what I learned as someone who did this on their own as far as self-taught, I didn't go to school for this. So I'm not going to preach at you in a lot of scientific terms because I was never taught that. So I think I have a unique perspective to share of just like, first off, the excitement and the rain. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm so excited. That's why I wanted to come to this spot and come here because I was hoping that this is what we were going to see. And it's just such a special spot to me that I wanted to share it with you guys, um, especially as we get started as this new season rolls on. Super cool. Let's take a look. There's a few more awesome things back here. Don't step on the purple things. Oh my gosh, this is the craziest. But you know who I'm with? My brother. 